I have 3,215 pounds of food all grown on this property, ready to eat all winter long. And in this video, I'm gonna show you four techniques how we make that happen here on the farm. I'm Zach Buckle. I own this one third of an acre vegetable farm here in Cody, Wyoming, zone 4B. And this year we've sold $72,000 worth of vegetables and we're projected to sell 100,000 by the end of the year. So make sure you subscribe to see if we make it. And if you're serious about growing your own food, Check out our free garden starter guide at the link in the description below where I show you how to create a really easy, no dig garden in your backyard in four easy steps. So one of the easiest ways to store food through the winter is grow root vegetables like these carrots. We grow a lot of carrots on the farm and we store a lot of them to have a backup just in case the stuff in the ground doesn't work out for some reason, but we also harvest a lot fresh through the winter. But these are Bolero storage carrots. They're bred to store for three to six months in a fridge. Most carrots are gonna do that anyway, but this is a special breed variety that will do that. And I've done that from experience, it does work. And basically what we do is we harvest them in the field and pinch the green off so there's no green left and we went go ahead and soak and wash them because it's a lot easier to wash carrots right out of the field than it is to wait till they, the clay soil is caked on them over time and we have heavy clay soil so we want to make sure we get that off right away if you have sandy soil you could probably get away with washing them later but i prefer to do it right away it doesn't really make a difference if you leave them on um, because of the way that we're storing them. If you are in a traditional root cellar, that might be different, but storing them in a fridge is something almost everybody has access to. Root cellars are pretty rare. So this style of storage is in a refrigerator, which is what we're in right now, our, our, the farm's cold room. We keep it at 39 degrees through the winter, and these carrots will store three to six months like that in a closed environment like this plastic tote. So at home what you could do is you could get a stand-up fridge put it in your garage the stand-up fridges a lot of times you can get them for almost free on a facebook classifieds page you could fit 100 pounds of carrots in there in grocery bags tied up and it's the same idea as this and you can store them for three to six months no problem i see a lot of homesteaders doing that and it's the same technique as this it's just in a fridge so you don't have to worry about a root cellar because a root cellar is pretty hard to build there's a lot of, you need to know what you're doing to build a root cellar. So a fridge is pretty easy to come up with. It doesn't cost anything to run that, almost nothing in the cold winter months. And 39 degrees is better than room temperature for carrots and all root vegetables. Same goes for these radishes that we have here. We harvested these cherry bell radishes and these French breakfast radishes yesterday because we have some cold weather coming up and that will make it so these will get damaged in the field. So we went ahead and harvested them, but it's the same thing. We just pinch off the greens, wash them, store them in a tote like this, and they're good for one to three months in this environment. And right here is our last bed of beets for the season, and we're gonna process them exactly the same way as the carrots and radishes. All we're gonna do is we're gonna take the beet and take a knife, and cut away the greens. And we cut away above the roots so there's still a little bit of green right there, but this won't really decompose and become gross. This just makes sure that all the moisture in the beet stays in the beet and doesn't evaporate because that's where all your storage loss happens is with moisture evaporating. And then we'll literally just take this, store it in a tote or a bag of some kind in our fridge and it's good for at least three months, probably four or five. So what you're looking at here is my all time favorite way to store food in the ground. This is a bed of storage carrots that we, if we wanted to, could leave in the ground till probably January in my climate. It depends on the weather. It, once it gets below about eight degrees Fahrenheit, carrots in my experience do get a little bit of damage but even still, they're very edible after eight degrees. It might just be the top inch or so that gets a little bit of frost damage. You could probably go a lot colder and it, it snows 
you really could go deeper in the winter. The only problem is it'll be hard to dig them out. Once the ground is frozen solid, it's pretty hard to get them out. But I have harvested carrots I grew in January in the ground and I didn't really do anything. It just needs to be harvested before it gets crazy cold, like negative 20 Fahrenheit. And so this method saves a ton of work. The way you could do this and pretty much guarantee you're gonna have carrots that you grew yourself all winter is once you see temperatures dipping below like 10 degrees Fahrenheit in your forecast, which in my climate really doesn't start to get happening regularly until late mid to late December, worst case, and most years January, just harvest your carrots in January or whenever that comes up on your forecast and store them like I showed you how to store root, root vegetables and then you'll still have those carrots for months after that because they start to deteriorate as soon as they come out of the ground. When they're in the ground, the moisture levels are perfect for them and they're not going to start getting rubbery. They're gonna store perfectly in the ground. And the same works for a whole bunch of other crops which I'm gonna talk about next, but Storing carrots in the ground is one of the most ingenious ways to store your food. You don't need a root cellar, you don't need a refrigerator, you don't need anything. You just need to grow them big and keep them in the ground until it gets really cold. And then once you harvest them, you have three to six months after that harvest, which if you did it in January would mean you have carrots from March to maybe June, if you're good that you grew yourself. So it's pretty much a guarantee. So that's why we don't harvest all of our carrots at once. We harvest them slowly. In-ground storage also works amazing for really cold hardy crops like chard. This chard will be good in the field until the temperatures get to below about 20 degrees Fahrenheit or so, and it kind of depends. All plants become tougher the more frost they've had. So one intense cold might shock them. Like if it went down to eight degrees Fahrenheit tomorrow night, these would be in trouble. But if it went slowly down from, you know, 27 degrees one week, then two weeks later it goes down to 23 degrees. Then two weeks later it goes down to 15. The plants are gonna be really tough at that point and they're gonna survive pretty deep into the winter. I'm expecting we'll be harvesting this chard into November this year, no problem, because it's really cold hardy. And the same goes for a whole bunch of other vegetables, like this kale. This kale will last till probably about 15 degrees Fahrenheit, and the same thing applies. The slower it gets cold, the more cold hardy these plants are going to get. But you're looking at at least 75 pounds of kale behind me that we're gonna be harvesting slowly but surely, probably up until about mid-December because kale's a little tougher than chard. And this is the toughest of all in-ground storage crops, spinach. I've had spinach in this field that survived the entire winter and regrew in May. And to give you some perspective, our winters are almost always negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit for a week at a certain point. It's pretty amazing to me that I've still had an entire bed of spinach that started growing in April and did not w die in the winter because everything else I've mentioned so far will die in that kind of cold. Spinach is an absolute game changer for winter nutrition. And all you need to do is grow it to maturity. Like we have this, this is like huge spinach. Uh, for me, I actually like it a little bit smaller. Um, and I actually find that the smaller it is, the more cold hardy it is, but this will still be good till mid-December, I guarantee it. And it's going to freeze solid when it gets down to 20, 15 degrees Fahrenheit. It'll freeze solid. And then as long as the daytime temperatures are warm enough to thaw it out, once it's thawed, it's totally good to harvest and you have a delicious winter salad. And if you have a greenhouse, you can really push this the, into January and February, no problem. It's a little trickier to do it just outside, just because a lot of times it'll be covered in snow. And in my situation, these trees are shading this, so it will not thaw much in the, in the daytime. 
but in a lot of other climates and if you have sun hitting the ground in the winter time in the day and the days are up to 50 degrees and sometimes we even get that in our climate if it gets up to 50 degrees in january then sometimes you might get lucky and it might thaw and you might be able to harvest it it all depends but the concept is incredible if you get the timing right uh, no problem you'll be harvesting this into december if you get the spinach to grow this big and you know by the time november rolls around most people are not harvesting anything from their garden you know unless you live in the south or something but in the north it's pretty hard to harvest anything from your garden so having spinach and all these cold hardy crops just makes your garden a food jungle in early winter for sure and possibly late winter if you're lucky and most herbs will work the same way as spinach and kale and chard just like this cilantro here we even have a little bit of dill it's not quite as tough as the other ones um, i wouldn't expect this to do well lower than about 20 degrees fahrenheit but we've left a little bit in our field just to test this out and i know from experience i've grown it in greenhouses where it gets way colder than 20 degrees and it survives just fine and eventually will regrow into something um, so stuff like this cilantro works great parsley also works great parsley is even tougher than cilantro i'm guessing we'll be harvesting this into november and maybe december depending on the weather um, and it just regrows like crazy and then if you like lettuce you could grow an even tougher cold hardy green called tokyo bacana which is what this is and we grow this in our greenhouses like crazy but we also have one fall crop in the field because it grows in 18 days the fastest day to maturity crop that we grow on our farm that i've ever heard of period um, and it literally is 18 days i mean this is almost getting too big nothing in the field is growing like this and it tastes kind of like lettuce it's more of like a lettuce and napa cabbage flavor but uh, we grow it alongside mustard greens and use it as a salad mix to have to sell to our customers in early fall and hopefully as deep into the winter as possible but this is a ridiculously cold hardy crop that you could grow in your garden and have salad until probably christmas with the same techniques i mentioned with spinach parsley cilantro it'll freeze solid and then as soon as it thaws in the daytime it'll be edible pretty deep into your early winter you know snowfall is going to make this a lot trickier so if you do have some kind of cold frame situation you're going to do a lot better um, we don't get much snow in wyoming so i rarely even worry about it um, especially and we don't get much snow until at least december so if you don't get snow until december you're going to have this crop and all the crops I mentioned for sure, pretty deep into November. Um, and stuff like kale, since it's above the ground, as long as you don't have two feet of snow, you could probably harvest that pretty deep into the winter also in your garden outside. And our last but not least for in-ground storage is green onions. I've talked about green onions on a whole bunch of videos on this channel. And there's a reason for that because they are so valuable in a small space they grow tons of yield and they are ridiculously cold hardy. I have had green onions live through the winter in this field many times. We were harvesting big leek sized green onions that survived all winter and turned into a leek. Probably would have been ready around June. So there's another added bonus to things like green onions and spinach because they will probably survive your winter and regrow in the spring. So. If you didn't get to harvesting it before it gets really cold if it survives that root structure is going to just come back and explode in the spring so overwintering is another food storage technique that gets you food in what's called the hungry gap which is a time between basically march and honestly in my climate june nobody's got anything growing in their garden in june here and that's when you're waiting for the first spring plantings to mature. That's called the hungry gap. These crops will be ready in the hungry gap. So you'll have things like fresh spinach and overwintered green onions in that time period. You know, it's very, very valuable. And if, again, if you have a greenhouse of any kind, this is gonna work so much better. But these green onions, we've grown them in greenhouses through the winter 
and probably harvested them into January. They're not as tough as spinach. So I'd say they're probably good till about 20 to 15 degrees. You know, that degree thing really depends on how fast the cold comes. And the more protection you would give to them, the more they're gonna last. But again, this one's gonna be good until probably Thanksgiving, no problem, even in my climate. So as long as you don't have a foot of snow on the ground, you could be harvesting green onions. They do get, when it gets really cold damaged, you'll see the outsides get slimy. And a lot of times you could just peel those slimy parts off and eat the inside and it's to totally good. Um, but you know, for prime eating, it's gonna be probably mid-November and you're good. Um, and that just adds a lot to your, your plate at a time of year when you're probably not harvesting much from your garden. So, onions and shallots. These are shallots, for those of you that don't know, they're a really small, concentrated onion type flavor that you use in salsas, sauces, stews, and they're much stronger than onions, which is why they're more expensive. And other than that, they're grown and cured almost exactly like onions, so I'm putting them in the same storage category. And these are our onions for the year. I think we have about 600 pounds of onions behind me, roughly, just guessing. Um, and we've got about 250, 270 pounds of shallots that are in storage already. Shallots mature a little bit earlier than onions, so that's why they're ready earlier. And the way that these are stored for winter is the same. Basically, they're strung up like this, and in, on our farm, we're stringing them up on these greenhouse trusses, and we have fans blowing air on them. So they just sit here for about two weeks, and then they are cured like this and then we just cut the greens off at about five inches above the bulb and store them in a breathable crate. You want these to be breathable because if you, it's the opposite of root vegetables. If you let these, if you don't let these breathe, then they'll rot. So you want these to have a breathable crate with holes in them, kind of like those black crates I showed you earlier in the video. Or you could literally just hang them up like this in your house, you know, or just, a basket of some kind it just needs to have air flowing through it and they will store for a year onions maybe a little bit less maybe six months to a year shallots for sure one year they're ridiculous that i'm very confident on onions depends a lot on the variety we always grow storage type onions so this is called a red wing from johnny's it's supposed to last about a year but it also kind of depends on the quality of the onion and how thick this skin is. This year it's looking really, really good. Um, these skins look really, really nice. So the healthier the onion, the longer it's going to store. But this requires no effort to store. You can store at room temperature pretty much. We store these in our cold room, mostly because we don't have a lot of space that's room temperature actually, which is kind of weird. Um, but it definitely is a little bit better in a cold room, but I've had shallots last room temperature all year, no problem. Onions, pretty much the same thing. And what you could do is you could just store them in a root cellar or fridge for a couple of months and then move them out. Doesn't really matter too much in my experience. Um, so a little bit of colder temperatures is better, but room temperature is not the end of the world. And this is how we can have food up until June or even August if you want. So some of these will last till August. You just have to plan and grow enough to last you that long. And that's a whole nother can of worms, but these are a phenomenal food source. And, you know, I put onions in everything in the winter. It's great for soups, stews, same with shallots, and it just makes food taste better. So the last method of storage I'm going to talk about today is happening right in this big white box. Freezing. So on our farm, every tomato that we don't sell at the market, we bag in one pound bags and freeze to sell basically indefinitely. I've had tomatoes frozen two years ago 
and use them in soups, stews, salsas, and they're still totally good. And what you're getting here is a tomato that's gonna replace canned tomatoes, but it's a tomato that you grew yourself. I know that's light years better than anything I'm gonna buy at the store. And I don't like to can, I don't know how to can. Um, I don't have time to can on a farm. So this is a phenomenal fast way, if you have the freezer space, to preserve your tomatoes and they last forever as long as you have power going to this thing which you know if you don't have power you're screwed but if you do have power you're looking at a huge longevity of a food source at least two years and that's just because i've only had tomatoes frozen that are two years old i'm sure they're probably good for like five years but i don't really know I don't know how long it takes for freezer burn to happen, but if you're using them the way I'm talking about, you literally take the tomato, frozen solid, you're making chili, you're making a curry, you throw the whole tomato in that curry for about whatever the recipe is calling for in canned. So say it's calling for one 12 ounce can, you're gonna use about 12 ounces of frozen tomatoes, which would be about three quarters of this bag. And those are gonna dissolve and turn into the most phenomenal tomato flavor that you've ever imagined. And honestly, that's kind of my favorite way to eat tomatoes is in those kinds of dishes where they're cooked down because that's where you really can taste the flavor, especially with paste tomatoes like this because there's not as much water in them. But the sweetness and acidity that you get from your tomatoes that you grew yourself is just something you're never gonna get from just a bland old can of tomatoes. And as an added bonus, here's another storage method that I've just figured out this year pretty much because I've never had green tomatoes that looks this good, is picking your tomatoes green at the end of the season. So if you say, if, say if you see a nice frost coming in your forecast and you know your plants are gonna die because tomatoes don't like the frost, pick all of the green ones, store them, and they will ripen way slower than the ones that you pick in the summer but they still turn into something pretty good as long as they're healthy. I've done this before where there was blight on the tomatoes and then they don't work as well and there's a lot more rot that happens and then it doesn't work. But our green tomatoes this year were really, really healthy and we picked these plants two weeks ago at this point and they're turning into this. This is almost as good as a summer tomato and it's still ripening. This was picked green, it will be 90% as good as the stuff from the summer. Nothing as good as tomatoes fresh in the summer. Frozen, it's not as good, but 90% is pretty good. It's definitely better than the store. And these green tomatoes would have been a total waste otherwise. So we have basically just bumped up our tomato yield on the farm by 400 pounds because we picked all the green ones and most of them are ripening into something sellable. I'm just over the moon excited about this because not only is it a bonus month of eating fresh tomatoes in October, which is most likely when this is happening for you, if you don't eat these, you could freeze them just like I showed you. So it's a guarantee you're gonna eat them. And if you're really insane, you can turn these green ones into salsa verde and it's almost like tomatillos. I don't usually do that because I don't find it to be quite as good and I'm not a huge salsa verde guy, but these work for fried green tomatoes, obviously. That's what a lot of people at the market will buy them for, but you can also make salsa verde with the green. So this again, adds another month at least to your tomato season by just picking them green. And you know, as long as the tomato plants and the fruit are green and healthy like this, you're gonna get another month of some kind of tomato food. So if any of this is making sense, leave a comment down below and let me know what you think, or hit those thumbs and let me know if you like or dislike this video. And if you're serious about growing food like this in your backyard, check out my free garden starter guide at the link in the description below where I show you how to set up a no dig garden in your backyard in exactly the same system as this in four easy steps. So throughout the course of this video, I've showed you how we on the farm have over 1,300 pounds of carrots in the ground ready to harvest all winter, 250 pounds storage, 35 pounds of stored radishes, 75 pounds of kale still in the ground ready to be harvested, 
15 pounds of chard ready to be harvested, about 20 pounds of parsley in this bed, and about 75 pounds of green onions between this bed and this bed over here. About 20 pounds of spinach left in this bed, ready to eat. About 600 pounds of onions and about 275 pounds of shallots and at least 500 pounds of tomatoes between the stuff we already have frozen and all this stuff over here that's ripening. Cause to be honest, I don't actually know how many we have. It's probably a lot more than 500 pounds. And so there you have it. 3,215 pounds of food that we and our customers will be eating from now until May of 2025. And I'm guessing on the 3,215 pounds, I think it's more than that because I think we have a lot more than 500 pounds of tomatoes and a little bit more than 1,300 pounds of carrots in the ground. But I'm being conservative just to make the point that you could do a ton of food storage in the ground and harvest a lot of crops deep into the fall winter time to stretch your food storage time because you don't have to can and freeze absolutely everything that you produce. You can eat a lot of it in the field late into the season. That allows us to run our business a lot better because if we had to just make all of our money in the entire growing season, we would have a lot harder time. But it also allows you as the gardener, the producer, to consume your food in a staggered way so you're not having to stress and you know preserve it all at once because that's hard. So doing it like this makes it a lot less stressful and a lot more sustainable in my opinion. And you basically turn your backyard, your land into a food pantry for your family. So hope you enjoyed that video and I will see you in the next one.